Tonight, I'd like you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 18. I'm going to read verse 3. I'm going to talk about converted tonight with the help of the Lord. Unless the Lord changes my mind. I know a lot of people, I don't think they know what converted means. Converted means to change something from one state to another. If you have a building and you want to convert that building to be suitable for something else, you've got to change it. There's some things you have to do. There's things in our life be, we need to be converted. I tell you, in our time, we have many people that has been converted in their past. Mm -hmm. They backslid, what we call backsliding in the Bible. And they went back in the world. And then they, when they try to come back to the Lord, they want to hang on to all the things that they yeah. once give up years yeah. ago. But when they bring them to come back to church, they try to bring them into the church. And they say, I'm a Christian. And they're still doing the same old things and holding on to the same old habits that they had. But children, you can't make it to heaven like that. And I have to tell people, you can't get into heaven. If it took you to be converted the first time you come to God, and you come back to the Lord, you're going to have to be converted. Right. Amen. When I first repented of my sins, I made up my mind I want to live for the Lord. Yeah, they were things, Brother Don, that I had to work on, that I still, I, I was working toward that. But I believe that the, the day we're living in, people's got used to hanging on to things. Right. And they just they just hang around them. They yeah. just hang around. You know what? If you've got an old cat that hangs around your door and you feed it, you'll never get rid of it. Right. Amen. My, my dad was doing animals would come around and tell, don't be feeding that because they're not going to go away. If you feed the devil, he's never going to go away. Amen. If you got an old habit and you're holding on to it and you think that you're going to, you're a Christian, you're not. Amen. You need to be right here. Get rid of that thing. Amen. I'll tell you what, it, it really means something tonight. And people got to be converted. If you're not converted, you're not going to make it tonight. There's things that we have to do. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 3, he said, and, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. How many believe that? Today? So what does it mean to be converted? It means to be changed and become as a little child. And that little child is loving. It's forgiving. You can spank a little child and it'll, it'll forgive you in a little bit. Amen. That's what's wrong with a lot of children now. People don't whip their children. They don't make them mind. And then when they, if you don't make them mind when they're little, they're going to they're gonna make you mind when they get older. Amen. I've saw it down through the years. And, I, you know, I've, I've watched it happen. But there's that something that we have to do. We've got to bring ourselves into subjection. Amen. We've got to bring our children into subjection. You can't just beat your children and abuse them. Amen. I, I've never abused none of mine. I made them think they was getting abused, though, some of the way they run around. But you know what? I made them mine. Thank God. And I made them respect the house of God. I've got children now. They don't come to church. Amen. But if they do come to church, they respect the house of God. They know that what the house of God is. That it's, it's, it's a thing of God. And you know what? Children, you can bring the wrath of God up on you for not minding and behaving in the house of God. Yeah. I want Amen. you to think about this. Oh, Elisha, one time there's a bunch of, the Bible said there was 40 children. And then 40 children was making fun of them. Yeah. Of Elijah, yeah. and the Bible said the bears come out of the woods and eat them little children up. Uh -huh. Amen. Because they was bis they wasn't obedient. They were yeah. they didn't respect the man of God. And I'll tell you what, we need to respect one another, yeah. and we need to respect the house of God. Yeah. And we the Bible said, children, obey your parents. And and the Bible said tells the fathers, don't cause your don't in other words, don't abuse your children and cause them to, to wrath. You can stir your children's wrath up too. There's a way to do everything. Yeah. Amen. Really, I don't think if somebody's mad, they ought to whip their children. No. Amen. No. I didn't know I was going to get on this, but it's still good. I don't think if you're mad, you ought to whip your children. You ought to wait a little bit. I believe if they need a whip, give them one. Right. But I believe that you need to wait. If you're mad, you ought to just wait a little bit. And use a little bit. My dad used to do that. He'd tell me he's going to give me a whooping, and when I, I think I'd, I'd be just as good as I could be all evening, just waiting for him, you know. And he never would, and when it would be bedtime, I, he'd, he'd, I thought, oh boy, he, he forgot about it now. He ain't going to whoop me. But then when bedtime came, he said, Remember what I told you? 
Amen. And I'll tell you what, he gave me, he gave me a whoop. And you know what? I love my daddy for that. And the Lord, lo he loves everybody. Amen. And he's going to chasten everyone that he loves. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I know that in the world, we don't, Dr. Spock, he don't think we ought to whip our children. Yeah. He don't yeah. think we ought to let them run wild and do what they want to do. That's why the world's in the shape of yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But I want you to think about even your children, thank God. If we don't show conversion, if we don't change, they're not going to change. Right. If you're not faithful to the house of God, you'll never get your children to be faithful to the house of God. If you don't live right, dress right, and show yourself up before the Lord, then no, your children's not going to do it either. Because real, really, we're instructing them. If I don't do it, thank God, and, and the church ain't going to do it. And you know what? If you ain't going to live right, don't go off and tell people I'm your pastor because yeah. I'm not. Amen. Amen. Because I'm not going to stand and guard over something that's wrong and, and make people think that it's right. right. And I think Brother Maynard, he preached on this a little bit today. Amen. Everybody blames the preacher anyway. Yeah. I, I worry about things I do and how I do my job and, and everything I worry about people because if I do anything wrong, I know they're going to blame God. Yeah. No matter what you do, somebody's going to blame God. But I want to stand with a clean heart before the Lord, Amen. thank God. And I want to tell people, thank God, we got to be converted. There's got to be a change in our life. Right. Amen. You come to us like Brother Johnny's talk. You can't come down the aisle chewing bubble gum and, and whistling and, and going to the altar. You've got to have a heart. Thank Amen. God, your heart's got to be changed. Amen. The broken heart, the contrite spirit, ain't got, the God will despise that. If you've got a desire to live for God tonight, you can live for yeah. Amen. But you're gonna to have to give him your all. Amen. If you're cheating on your husband and you're and you're still and you come to church and you're still cheating on your husband and you've never repented, right. you've never been converted. Right. Amen. If you're smoking cigarettes, thank God, and you come to church and you're still smoking cigarettes, you need to get rid of them nasty things. Right. Amen. Yeah. Because they destroy your testimony. Yeah. You can't go to nobody and testify to them and tell them about smoking cigarettes and tell them that you love the Lord. Because right. I'm I'm not gonna believe it. But I know today in the time we're living in that a lot of preachers, they let people do that and they don't preach against it and they just say, well, you know, it's a nasty habit. Yes, it is. But that's, that's, that's still, the Bible said cleansing ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. I got perfecting holiness in the fear of God. If I get up here, I, in other words, if I'm smoking cigarettes, I don't have no business up in this pulpit. How many say amen? amen. Would any of you listen to me? If you caught me out there smoking a big stogie, no. No. I know this, this might be hard, but it's the truth. The same thing goes with coming up here singing or playing music, anything coming up in the church. You can't go right here and run around. That's why I've always been against these old music tapes that they make because you might bring that music in there and it might sound beautiful, but if you could just take a picture of the people while they're making that music, all of them sitting out there smoking cigarettes, having a drink, but they're putting a the sound on the soundtrack, I tell you what, it's not a holy thing. It's not a godly thing tonight. How many say amen? Amen. Amen. I know this hey, this don't move very good with, with a lot of people, but I can't help it. So, huh? I, I just it just worries me. Yeah. I watch people get in and they just play around, play around, play yeah. around. In the word. People comes to me and tries to convince me what a good Christian they are. Yeah. When I can look yeah. right at them and see they're not a good Christian. Yeah. Yeah. I see the way they're living. Yeah, amen. amen. I see things that they used to, give, the ones things that they used to, they give them up. And now they pick them back up and then they come back and sit in the house of God and say, they're like, you were like you. Yeah. We're just like you. Preachers say, well, we preach Acts 2.38 just like you. Well, that's good if you preach Acts 2.38, but what about the rest of the Bible? Amen. What about the other 66 amen. books that's in there? Are we going to preach about that? Amen. I'll tell you what, we're going to take it all. How many loves the Lord tonight? Amen. Amen. Go with me, thank God, to Acts chapter 3. I'm going to start reading about the 19th verse. I want people to do good. I want people to do better. But there has to be a change in your life. You can't smoke pot and be a Christian. You know what? We say, we say that as a joke, but you know there's people that believe that? Yes. 
They believe it's okay to have them smoke a little bit of pot, and all this new medicine's coming out now. There's it's full of pot too, yeah. and they're telling people what a great drug that is. Well, I'm not going to do it. Thank God. Right. The, they can tell me that I can drink a bottle of wine once a week and I feel better too, and I'm not going to do that either, right. even if they tell me to do it, because the Bible tells me not to touch it, never look upon it, but it serves itself up right. I'm just not going to do it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I had a boy come to my house one time, told me about a repented and what a great deliverance God had given me. And then before he got out of the house, he started telling me about smoking the joint once in a while. I said, honey, I said, you ain't never repented yet. And he tried to tell me, he said, well, God said it was good. He said everything that he created was very good. I said, yeah, God created a lot of things. But I said, he did tell us to set them on fire and set them down on there. Amen. I said, Everything's made for a reason, children. I, I want you to think about it. People believe sin is not going to get in. That's right. People getting drunk. Yeah. People meeting in the basement. Nice. Having a little drink before church. Yeah. Amen. People so strung out on pills they don't even know where they're up or down. Yeah. And still going to church professing to be a Christian. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, God wants us to be sober yeah. and have good conscience yeah. before Him. Yeah. Amen. I want to have good conscience. Yeah. And there's things sometimes in my life that I, 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 I check myself. I worry about myself. I say, oh God. Help me to be better. Help me not to say that again. Help me not to do this again. I'll tell you what, I, I want to be honest with you tonight. I'm not perfect tonight. I've never got up here and said I'm perfect. But I'll tell you what, what's in this book is perfect. Thank God. And the one that called us, he was perfect. And the one that hung on the cross, he was perfect. Thank God. How many say amen tonight? And he said, be ye holy, for I'm holy. If he's holy tonight, he's called us unto holiness, and he expects us to be that way. How can we just stand around and say, well, I'm all right. But you know what's the bad part about this? People don't know no better. Yeah. People don't know no better. Amen. They think they're all right. You think Jesus thought he was all right? I do. Yeah. I think it's because his mind said yeah. yeah. That's why when, when he when a woman come in there and, and pulled the, poured the ointment on Jesus and washed his feet, and Judas began to complain, saying, why was this waste? Why couldn't have this been sold for 300 pence and give to the poor? And the Lord spoke right in the book. He said, he never said it because he cared for the poor, but it because he carried the money back. Yeah, sure. In other words, that's where his mind was at. It was all about the money. Yeah. Amen. Where's your heart? When we look at people, we ought to be thinking about people, whether they're going to make it or not. Yeah. In other words, instead of going along with people and the way they're living and just trying to get them to go, just get by, I'll tell you what, you're not just going to get by. Amen. Right. Oh, Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore. Brother Johnny taught on repentance this morning. But there's something else. Mm -hmm. And be what? Converted. Converted. That means you've got to be changed. Yeah. There's going to be a change in your life. If people come to the altar, they get up. When they come back, when they go back and sit down, there's going to be a change in their life. Amen. I remember when I repented, Brother Johnny, I remember my hands felt different. I remember Brother Don talking about that. He said, when I, when I got up for praying, I prayed for a while. When I got up, my hands even felt different. Because there was a change in my life. And the things that, that, I, that I used to do, I remember I, I went outside of the church the night I repented. And I mean, I'm just talking about me. I went outside of the church the night I repented of my sins. And I remember I went outside and I had a pack of Winston's in my shirt pocket. And I read to him in my pocket. And I pulled out that pack of Winston's and the Lord checked me right there. And it was, and I turned to the Lord. I remembered, Brother Chris. I said, Lord, I can't give it all up in one day. So I went ahead and lit me one up. And you know, I thought about that all, all that day, all that evening. When I, and when I went home that night and I went to bed, I woke up and I was in a dream somewhere way up in the morning. Amen. Three, four, five o'clock, I don't know. But I was in a place that was gray. That's the only thing I can say. It was just a gray place. And I thought I didn't have no family. I never had no friends. I was there all by myself. And I was trying to figure out where, where am I at? You know, what, what's going on? Where am I at? And it was just like a voice spoke from within me and said, you're standing before God. And I thought right then, I thought to myself, I thought, oh, I'm so glad that I went to the altar last night. I'm so glad that I went and asked God to forgive me of my sins. I was starting to feel better because of my conviction. But it was like after that, all I could think about, I remember reaching in my pocket, getting that pack of cigarettes out of my pocket and saying, Lord, I can't give it all up in one day. And it was like when I'd done that, I just felt like, like I was melting down. 
And I, that feeling just came up on me. And it was like I was going to be lost. And I said, Lord, just for this one thing. And I remember the terror that I felt. And how I felt there laying in the bed. And when I woke up, Brother Jim, I was tickled to death that I was awake. I was still glad that I was in the land of the living. And I thought God could have took me out in that shade and I've been lost. But he showed me if there's anything between me and him that is when you come before judgment, that judgment, it's going to be there. Right. If you've got something in your life tonight that you're holding against somebody, you've got something that you're doing, and when the Lord comes, you're going to be nobody there but you think, God, just like that song said, I don't face nobody's record but my own. And I knew that night that when the Lord, I don't know about anybody else, Brother Jim, but I knew that night, thank God, I was going to be lost. Because he was he was coming and he was bringing judgment, thank God. And I knew, thank you know what, that day I quit smoking. Amen. Oh, I got up that morning and I started saying, well, you know, I'm going to slow down. I'm going to quit a little bit at a time. You don't quit a little bit at a time. You've got to give it up. You want to live for God, you're going to have to give it up. you got to make up your mind. If you realize you're going to go to hell, then you're going to give it up. Thank God. You're not going to hold on to things. People have convinced themselves in their mind that it's all right. It's all right if I do these little things. I'll get by. God's a loving God. God's understand. But God ain't going to understand. He told us he's all sin. It's going to burn in the lake of fire. Sir. And we've got to look at those things. I knew this might be hard, but I, but I can't help it. It's the truth. People just want to hold on to sin and keep on yeah. doing those things. You know, just like Brother Taylor used to tell us, thank God, when, when we talk about looking at a widow, he said it ain't wrong to look at a woman. But he said when you drive around the block to look at her again, that's when you get in trouble. Yeah. Amen. You're going to have things that's going to be before your eyes and things that you're going to fight more. The Bible said there's a war in this flesh, a war against the flesh and the spirit, but we got to overcome. That's why he said greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. We have to overcome these things. We can't fulfill them. That day I said, well, I'm going to give them up a little bit of time. That morning, I thought, boy, about 11 o'clock, me and another boy was driving up to West Virginia, going to put some windows in. And I remember I looked up at that old cigarette pack laying up there, and there's two gone out of it. And I thought, boy, I'm really doing good. I, I, I'd smoke two or three packs a day. And I'd say, it was all, oh, I was real, I'm really doing good. I just, uh, boy, I'm, I only smoked two cigarettes. Boy, God's really proud of me. And as it went on, I, I remember looking up there, it was about 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and half of that pack was gone. And then I just, I just felt ashamed when I looked over there and I saw that pack laying there. And it was just like I, I just told the Lord. I said, Lord, who am I trying to kid? Yeah. Who am I trying to kid? Am I trying to convince you or convince myself? And I just shoved him across the dash. And the old boy looked at me and he said, what's the matter? What are you doing? I said, I, said, I just quit. He said, you quit? I said, yeah. I took my cigarette lighter out and I threw it across there. And I said, there it is. You can have it too if you want it. Amen. And of course, he took them. Amen. But the thing about this, I never did smoke enough. Amen. I'm not going to say I didn't like the smell of them when it come by my nose. But I'll tell you what, I hate them now as much as I used to love them. Hate them worse because I know that they'll drive me away from God. And I'll tell you, I saw people down through the years. They just put preacher. Brother Doug told me. I don't know why I've gone on that. A brother Doug said he went to up in West Virginia. He was preaching in a revival. He said, thank God, and, and the people was a singing. He's been preaching his heart out, telling people about the Holy Ghost, telling them about they needed the Holy Ghost. And this boy, this young boy, kept praying at the altar, praying at the altar. Thank God. And, <coughs> and I guess it, when they took a break, that he sat down with Brother Doug, and, and he said, he told Brother Doug, he said, you know, he said, the only thing I reckon I do is a smoke. He said, they, and that smoke, it bothers me. Amen. And, but he said, my pastor said it was all right to do it. And Brother Doug said, said your, it ain't all right for your pastor to do it either. Right. And then he'd already had a convicted heart about it. It was standing in his way. He couldn't get through to his prayer. But he was holding on to something. And because his pastor said it was all right, he still got dinner. Before the revival was over, Doug said he gave up the cigarettes and he got the Holy Ghost. Amen. And I guess Doug told the pastor that he needed to quit too. Amen. I'm just like I'll tell you what you, some of you guys you've been protected around here you ain't seen none of this stuff 
Yes. So there's a church world out there full of stuff that's going on. Even preachers, thank God, they do everything in the world. They tear the churches up. They cause people to fall away. Amen. But I'm going to tell you what, God is going to bring judgment upon them. Amen. They're going to receive a greater damnation because of the things they're doing. That's like I said. I didn't know I was going to preach on this tonight, but I'm going to tell you what, God wants a holy people. He wants people that's going to live right. Amen. You can't be cussing out of one side of your mouth and praising God out the other. Amen. I'll tell you, think about it tonight. I'll tell you what, we got some good singers here in this church. Amen. And I hope I don't offend you. We got some really good singers in this church. And if you was willing to go out there in the crowd, you would have a crowd of people following you. Yeah. And, and it's because you're good singers, but you know what? They won't come down here to listen to you. Right. You know why? Because down here we stand for the truth. Yeah, okay. Think about it. Amen. Think about what I'm saying. I'm, I'm telling you what, you can go places. I know I can go places yeah. that'll be accepted, but why won't people come here? Okay. It's because we got a standard. Yeah. They know how we live. They got all they make up things about us. Amen. They think we're crazy. Think we're old fashioned, but we are old fashioned. I'm serving a God that's a he's an old fashioned rock. Yeah. And I'm not standing on that rock. He's a holy rock to me. If we go out there and join up with the world, we can have a gang, we can have yeah. a crowd. But if we try to separate ourselves from the world and live a holy life, yeah. people won't go along with you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let's read. Amen. Repeat it, therefore, and be converted. And, let me see. Why will you be converted? That your sins, that your sins may be blotted out. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't repented, and if you haven't been converted... Then you still have your sins. Amen. Amen. People get to, people need to be baptized. They keep putting off baptism. You need if there's anything standing away your baptism, you need to put it off. You need to put it away from you. You need to go and make things right with God. If you know something's wrong, you need to give it up. I can't say I'm gonna I'm gonna wait until I quit cheating on my wife, then I'm gonna come to the Lord. My Lord. Repent you therefore and be converted. That your sins may be blotted out. Your sins will be blotted out if you're converted. Mm -hmm. How do you get how do you how many knows our our plan of salvation banner back there? Yeah. That's how you get converted. Amen. You said repent. Be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. That is being converted. There's a change in your life. We read in the Bible it was people that wasn't converted. Remember Simon the sorcerer? Yeah. He believed. The Bible said, you know, people said all you got to do is believe. But the Bible said that Simon believed. Yeah. Simon believed. And the Bible says he even was baptized. There's people today that say, well, all you got to do is repent and be baptized, but you got to go on. But in his heart, if you follow along, he wasn't right with God. He tried to buy the Holy Ghost. Amen. He wanted the power that moved every lady's hands on. He could get the Holy Ghost. You know why? He wasn't thinking about being getting the Holy Ghost, Brother Johnny. He was thinking about the money that could be made. I remember a little preacher that came here one time many years ago to preach. Amen. And I, I never I never met him. Amen. Brother Bishop brought him here. Amen. And, but after service, Amen. I went up to take him up to get something to eat up to McDonald's after. Thank God. And all he could talk about was this great church, how big this church was. And the only thing I could see, it wasn't a holy thing, but all I could see dollar signs was in his yeah. eyes. That's the only thing he was saying. He wasn't thinking about souls. He wasn't thinking about people. He was thinking about himself. Thank yeah. God. And as time went on, he, that fella really got in a lot of mess. He caused a lot of havoc among the church. He not just, I'm not talking about here, but he went away from here. He caused a lot of havoc. He caused trouble in other churches. He tried to go move in and take over other churches. And God brought a lot of trouble. They got into his own house. Amen. I tell you what, it's a serious thing tonight to respect the house of God. We can bring the wrath of God down upon us tonight by being disobedient to him. Amen. Repeat you, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. And when the times 
of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Now, the times of refreshing. What is the word? What is for refreshing? Anybody know what the refreshing is? Yeah, it's the Holy Ghost. I want to show you. This word is in the Bible two times. Yeah. Only two times is word refreshing. You can look in your concordance right now if you want to. Amen. You can look on your phone and look up refreshing in the Bible. It's only in the Bible two times. And we're going to come back here. We're going to come back, but I'm going to take you to that place. Thank God. Let's go with me to the Isaiah chapter 28. And I know probably some of you, you've read this many times. And I'm not trying to be hard or mean tonight. It seems like sometimes it just my heart stirred up and I worry about people Amen. and I see how people play around. I don't, want, I don't want to see nobody go to hell. I don't want to see nobody be lost. Yeah, right. But children, people's going to be yeah. and they're going, they're going there with their eyes wide open. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Something to think about. You know, there might even be something in your life tonight that's wrong and yeah. you know it's wrong and you keep holding on to it thinking God's going to give you a chance. Amen. But he's giving you a chance right now. Right. If you got up this morning, I've had people, heard people say they've never really had time to, to serve the Lord. And they, how, how old are you? Yeah. How long have you been in this earth and you yeah. haven't had time to serve the Lord? Right. Isaiah 28. I'm going to start out in verse 11. He said, For with the stammering lips, and another time will he speak to this people. He's talking about God. To whom he said, this is the what? Rest. The rest. Now, if you take this, this is Isaiah 28, 11. If you turn it around and say Matthew 11, 28, Jesus said, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. So that's the rest. That's the Holy Ghost, children. That's what it's talking about. The times is not the Holy Ghost, but he's showing us that that's the coming. That's the evidence of it. Now listen to what he said. Remember that word refreshing? Now look here. He said there, he said, this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. And listen, and this is the what? Refreshing. refreshing. Yet they would not hear. The refreshing is the stammering lips at another time. Does everybody agree with me? Amen. Ain't that what it says? You want to read it again? He said, for with the stammering lips in another time will he speak to this people to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest and this is the refreshing yet they would not hear. Now the refreshing is the Holy Ghost. It's the stammering lips in another time. Now go back with me. Thank God too. Where was that? Acts chapter 3. Verse 19. Where we started off there a while ago. What's the refreshing? The stammering lips in another tongue. Or we could say it's the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I remember my cousin Tim showed me this verse, this passage, many, many years ago when we worked at the Salty. And I thought, my, what a revelation. He said, repent ye therefore and be converted. That's first. You've got to do that. Yeah. You're not going to get the Holy Ghost unless you're being converted. Right. 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 That's why people in the world today, everybody don't have the Holy Ghost. The Bible said it's given, but they can't receive it yeah. because their heart ain't right. right. Now, I'm, I'm not talking about if you're seeking the Holy Ghost, you're seeking the Lord, it's for you. You're going to get it. But I'm going to tell you what, if there's anything in your life that's standing in your way, you need to exit it. Thank God. Yeah. Get it out of your life. But he said, he said, repent, therefore be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. And when the times of the what? Or the stammering lips in another tongue. Yeah. When that happens, when that stammering lip in another tongue comes, then he said, what's he going to do? He shall send who? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. In other words, that's when the Holy Ghost is going to come. When the stammering lips and other tongue comes, that's when the Holy Ghost is coming. He's trying to show us a revelation, but we've got to be converted. We've got to be changed. All right, let's go down. To, let's go to Acts 2.38. You're already in the book of Acts. Chapter 2, verse 38. We've got to repent. We've got to be converted. Right? 
He said, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and what? And be baptized. Some of us, part of us, if we want to. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, not this Jesus, not this Lord Jesus, but Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you something. There's a lot of Jesuses in the Bible, yeah, right. but there's only one Jesus Christ. That's right. There's a bar Jesus in there. There's a Jesus Justin. And in Mexico, that's they call it, instead of using the Jesus, they pronounce it Jesus. Jesus. Amen. It's a, it's a word that's real familiar in the Mexican language, but there's one word that separates it. It's Christ, because there's only one Christ. Mm -hmm. People said, well, Christ is not a name. Well, he said, he said, the foundation of God stand assured. Let every one that nameth the name of Christ, let them depart from iniquity. Yeah, I beg your pardon, Christ is a name. Yeah. That's the name that he inherited from the Father. Yeah. Amen. He, yeah. That name was appointed Jesus too, but he had he inherited Christ from the Father. Thank God. The angel said he'd call his name Jesus. He's going to save his people from their sins. But when he came into the world, being born into the world, amen, he became Christ. He was the Christ of God. He was the very anointed of heaven. Thank God. He still is, thank God, in Christ in us, the hope of glory. That's our, that's our hope tonight. That's right. That's right. I know a lot of times we use, the, we use the name Jesus' name. Jesus' name. We all, I've done it. I do it. used to do it a lot. But I don't do it anymore. Because it's a nickname for God. Yeah. Jesus' name. You can't find it in the Bible. And I know this might be hard. Because it was hard for me when I began to look at it. But his name is Jesus Christ. Yeah. And you say, well, a lot of places they called him Jesus. They sure did. And he is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Brother Johnny over there, his name's John. Johnny, but his last name is Sturgeon. Amen. If his wife married him, she couldn't just take on the name Johnny. She had to take on the name of Johnny Sturgeon. And then just like we, when we're baptized, we've got to take on the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And in the world today, there's a lot of people in just Jesus movement. They don't believe in the Christ. They believe it's a title. Amen. But I'll tell you what, he is the only God. And I, the Bible said there's not another name under heaven whereby we must be saved and by the name of Jesus Christ. It's a holy name, children. And that name will separate you from everybody else. Repent ye, be converted. All yeah. right. Repent ye therefore and be and, and repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I may believe that. For the promise is done to you and to your children, to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Y'all love me and so quiet in here. Right? Amen. I'm just doing a little teaching. Tonight. It's good teaching. If I get out of the word, Brother Johnny, just call me down. Amen. I would you? Yeah. Amen. I tell these brothers when they preach in the church, they tell me, well, I don't ask them what they're going to preach on. I don't, I don't quiz them in the back and say, now, what are you going to preach on tonight? And I've told Green ask Brother Jim. I've known Brother Jim. I've told Brother Jim. I said, Brother, you stay in the Word. I said, you're going to be all right with me. Amen. Amen. we got to do it by the Word of God. That's what, that's, I'm not in, real smart. Amen. But I am smart enough to know that God's Word is true. Right. And we got to go by that Word. Amen. All right. Go with me to uh, Luke chapter 22. I think it's already been quoted. We've been in church all day today. And Brother Johnny, we went here this morning. And we went out to Brother Maynard's this afternoon. And then had just got back time to come to church when we come back. Amen. I tell you what, I, I love the Word of God. I was Amen. preaching all day long. Amen. Luke 22 and 32. Somebody was talking about this earlier. The Lord was talking to Peter and he said, But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art what? When thou art what? Converted. Strengthened. Thy brother. 
That's what God wants us to do. Amen. But you know what? We can't help people unless we've been converted. Our right. people out here is preaching. They've never been converted yet. They don't have no business preaching. Amen. 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 If they're not, if they haven't been converted yet, they don't have a business doing anything. Right. In other words, people need to come by the way of the altar when they come into the church. Instead of coming in and starting to work out and going and doing something, starting to young people's choir or starting something, thank God people need to come by the way of the altar. Amen. Don't you think we ought to be sanctified Amen. before Amen. we set apart to do something? Amen. Amen. I know I, there's a, I've been studying about this, about water, about the pool of Shalom. And uh, it's a, it was a river, it was a spring, Shehan Spring, it came down. And it came down by the city of David. And when, when it came down, it was a spring, a spring of water that come out of the mountain. That's where the water they used in the, in the temple. And uh, but on Hezekiah's day, he, he tunneled underneath the city. And he brought that water all the way across the city. And he brought it down to the west side of the, of the city of Jerusalem. And, and it was called the Pool of Salaam. And people went there, and it was right at the water gate. When people would come into Jerusalem, going to the temple, they'd go by that water gate that was right there. And people went to that pool, amen, and they cleansed themselves. You know, they even then, they knew that they needed to cleanse themselves before they went on up to the temple to offer up their sacrifice. But today, people don't go by the water. They want to go on up to the temple and just start off up there. But you know what? Even, even then, they couldn't get in because the Holy of Holies was at the other end of that temple. And all they can do is go by the water. They can go up and go to the temple. They can offer the sacrifice. They can witness the candlestick. They can, they can whistle, whistle, you know, uh, they can witness the brazen altar. But the Holy Ghost had not been revealed yet. So they couldn't go into the Holy of Holies. But tonight, children, because we know the path and the blood of Jesus Christ, we can go into the Holy of Holies by the blood of Jesus. How many believe that tonight? Amen. But we have to go by the water route. We've got to pass through that way. There's something important we do. The Camels was commanded to show up three times a year at God in Jerusalem and offer their sacrifice, Brother Johnny. Amen. I know it's only three times. We, we come once a week. And when you come, don't you think you ought to be sanctified when you come here? Amen. Y'all sure. love me? Yeah. Yeah. This is a holy place. Amen. Amen. This is a holy place. You know what? We we pay somebody to take care of it. We we make sure the grass is cut. And th when things is broke, we make sure they're fixed. And we always try to make this look like the best, make it look as good or better than our house at home. Amen. Because this is God's house. Yeah. We don't want people going up and down the road and say, look how them people take care of the house of God. Right. Amen. They want they want people want to look at that and say, you know them people, well, you've got a beautiful church down there. People really take care of it. I'll tell you what, that says something about a person. Amen. Think about this. Amen. All right. He told Peter to strengthen the brother, but he had to be converted first. Go with me to Isaiah, or Acts chapter 28. <coughs> when sinners come into church, they look at the church to see how to live. They look at the church and see how to dress. Yeah. Yeah. They look at the church and see how to worship. Mm -hmm. Whether you realize it or not, you say you might think, well, I don't do nothing. I'll just sit here. But you do a lot. Because every one of us, the Bible said we're member, members in particular. Every one of us has got a place in the body. Yeah. And the Bible says that I can't tell the little toe it's not very good because uh, it's not the head or the hand. Yeah. We're all equal on the side of God. Yeah. Verse 26. That's what I was talking about. They can go unto this people and say, Hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand. That's why I've heard people say many times, I've heard you all say it here in the church, you say, I just don't understand why people won't come to church. I just don't understand. You know why? Because they can't hear. That's right. They can't hear. 
Two people could be sitting on the same shoe and God will be dealing with one of them and that one will get to the other and the other one there is there to fail a thing yeah. or solve a thing. But it's because God has to give you, uh, open up your mind where you can see. Like Brother John was talking this morning, God's got to deal with people. Yeah. People can't just come when they want to come, put God on when they want to, take him off. Amen. I, I'll tell you what, I knew when I was a sinner, I knew that if the Lord came, I was going to be lost. Yeah. I want other people to know that. I want our young people. If some of them don't eat, ain't living right, they don't go right, I want to know that they're going to give an account for what they're living, how they're living. Yeah. But people want to go somewhere where people's not going to condemn them for what they wear. Amen. They don't want to condemn them for the way that the places they loaf at. Yeah. Hey, everybody wants to come and wants a preacher, make them feel good. Okay. Amen. And you might feel good on this side of the grave, but then when you go to hell, you'll be hunting me and gnash on me with your teeth because I didn't tell you the truth. That's right. God forbid that that would happen. Amen. Yeah. Saying, go, ye, go unto this people and say, hearing, ye shall hear. People hear what you say and shall not understand. And seeing, ye shall see and not perceive. People can't see. For the heart of this people is waxed gross. Yeah. And their ears are dull of hearing. Mm -hmm. And their eyes have they closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be what? Converted. converted and I should heal them. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, if you're converted, you know the Bible says in every house there's vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. There's all kind of, in our house there's all kind of honor. Everything's got a purpose, ain't God? In this world we're living, God's got a purpose for everything. Amen. But I want to be a vessel of honor, brother, yeah. brother Tim. When the Lord, if the Lord looks for me, He wants to use me, and I'll use the old glass in the cupboard. Amen. If I go to the cupboard to get me a, a drink of water, I want to grab me a clean, clear glass. If I've seen one that's got smudges all over, and sometimes if I wash the dishes out, they got smudges all over. Amen. Any brother, yes, brothers, brothers, uh, get caught up in that? Amen. Greasy place, you pile up in the dish drainer. Amen. You know what? You're going to give an account for that. Amen. Because somebody's going to find that greasy place. Wow. Somebody's going to find that old cup that you just stuck in the cabinet, you drank milk out of, and still ring around the bottom. Everything's going to be made manifest. Amen. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm not trying to be funny. I mean, I'm serious tonight. Amen. People, they look at things. They're wide open, but if your heart ain't right, you're not going to be able to see it. You're not going to have conviction. I can preach my heart out, but if people's, if people's eyes are blind, then thank God I can help them. If God don't open up their understanding, they won't be open. But with God's help, if the people, if they try to get it by me, I'm, going, I'm not going to let them. I'm going to tell them, no, you're not right. People get upset with me sometimes. Yeah. And you know what? It hurts me to tell people sometimes. Yeah. 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 So but if I, God, I, I tell preachers that you got to be faithful. Don't you think you have to be faithful? Yeah. Amen. How many of you men here would marry a woman that wasn't faithful? No. How many of you women marry a man that wasn't faithful? Or vice versa? You wouldn't do it, would you? No. no. The Lord ain't going to marry you if you ain't, right. you ain't faithful. Amen. He's not going to marry you if you're out here flirting around with everything else. Amen. If you're committing fornication and running around here and being dishonest to him, he's not going to have confidence in you. He's not going to want you, thank God, for his bride. Amen. The Bible said the bride's made herself ready, thank God. Amen. That's just like Mary and Joseph, thank God. She was found with the child of the Holy Ghost, but you know what? She was a virgin. She hadn't got to run around on Joseph. Amen. But when they got, she was a spouse of Joseph, she was to keep herself until that time when he was to take her to be his wife. Amen. When he come back, he would find her pure. Amen. That's what God wants to find. When God comes back, he's going to be looking for a people that's made herself ready. One that's give up sin. Give up the lifestyle of the world. And they're ready, thank God, to meet him when he comes back. Amen. As a bride, I'm ready to meet the groom, thank God, when they, when they come together. But I'll tell you what, I think a lot of us will be turned away. Amen. Because they're not ready. Yeah. They're not clean. God don't want us to be unclean. Right. How can you be unclean? By just being disobedient to the yeah. word of God. 
I know this has kind of been a hard message tonight. Good message. But children, think about how what the seriousness of this. I get up here and preach something. You can get you can get on the internet and get on there and tell how wrong I am if you want to, but you're gonna stand before God for it. That's right. That's so discord. Amen. Amen. That's if I right. teach anything in the church and you come against it openly before the church or anywhere, thank God you're rebelling against God. Amen. That's right. That's if right. I preach something that you don't believe and you tell me about it, don't go tell somebody else. Amen. Amen. Because that destroys the unity yeah. in the church. Amen. Think about Amen. this, how how serious it is. Amen. If you go home and tell your children how bad I am, when that time comes for them to come to church, amen, they're not going to listen to me. Amen. The only thing they're going to look at is that's the guy my mom said he did that's this right. did that yeah. said the yeah. other. Amen. amen. And that really goes on. Amen. People don't think that goes on. Amen. That's why children are Democrats and Republicans that's because right. mom and daddy is. Yeah. Amen. Most of them don't know what a Democrat is. That's right. Most of them don't know what a Republican is. Most of them don't know what a Baptist is. Amen. People say they're Baptists, but they don't know they don't know what a Baptist sure. is. When I went into service, I told them I was apostolic. That's why I was raised. And I remember that guy looked at me and said, I have a what? And I said, I apostolic. And they wanted to put Protestant on the dog tags. And I said, No, you ain't putting that Protestant on my dog tags. He said, Then you're a Catholic. I said, No, I'm not no Catholic. He said, Then you're a Jew. I said, No, I'm not a Jew either. And he said, well, what are you? I said, I'm an apostolic. He said, I never heard of that before. But I, he told me, you're a Protestant. So he put Protestant on my dog tags. But I didn't know what I was, Brother Don. All I know is what I've been taught. And that's why a lot of people are. You just go on what you've been taught. Amen. Do you really know for yourself? Do you really know God tonight? Amen. That's why I said, we don't want ever all kind of names on the church door. I'm going to put the name of Jesus Christ. I know it's right. Amen. I know it's right. Amen. I'm going to baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. You know why? Because I know it's right. Amen. I'm not going to baptize the Lord Jesus Christ because I, I don't know if that's right. I know He's the Lord, but that's not His name. That's right. Uh, his name is Jesus Christ. I'm not going to do it to Jesus either because I believe His name is Jesus Christ. And I want to do it. I want to obey the whole word. I want to be right. I even heard people at the river when we was up here one time baptizing. The people up there baptized. They baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and by the authority of Jesus Christ. In other words, they said they said it all because they want to get it right. I said, all you got to do is get in the book and read what it says. You can see what's right. The word of Jesus Christ. Christ. That's what's right. He's the one that came to die for us. He is. He's the one they nailed to the tree. He's the one that rose the third day. When the stone was rolled out of the way, He rose again. He's still risen, saving you and I. He's in our lives tonight. He's healing us and bringing us to the fire tonight. But not being on a solid rock. That's what I want to hold on to tonight. Amen. We cannot make it unless we're converted. Amen. we got to be converted. we got to be changed. Brother Jenkins ain't trying to be mean to nobody. It's being loved. I love you tonight. Amen. Tell everybody, we've got to be converted. We've Amen. got to be changed. Yes. Don't let the young people come into church and let them hold on to things and encourage them. Amen. Discourage them from the things they're doing. No. Amen. You don't have to be mean to them. No. But you can sure discourage them. That's right. And you know what? If, if, if somebody's got a bad habit, just like that smoke when I say it, I'm not mad at nobody. Just keep coming to church. Amen. Just keep coming to church. Yeah, yeah. Just Amen. keep coming to church. Yeah, yeah, and if you keep coming to church, a conviction will wear you down and you give that up. That's right. Because you're going to feel convicted every time you come to church. And every time a preacher gets on the floor. And every time somebody sings a song, you're going to feel that conviction. Yeah. And God's going to deal with you. Right. Now, I had somebody tell me one time, said, well, they weren't going to come to church because they smoked. I said, well, now, I said, you're making two sins out of one. Amen. Yeah. They said, what do you mean? I said, well, the Bible tells you you ain't supposed to defile your temple. Right? Yeah. I said, it also tells you to go to church, not to lay out the church. And don't say that. Yeah. I said, then now, you got two you got two sins you're doing. Amen. One, if you get one old devil that hangs around, thank God you let him hang around long enough, you'll get another to hang around there. Amen. If you let one sin go tonight, the one there'll be another one come yeah. along time. I know people. I'm sitting in the, in, the, in my truck. I'm talking to people. Thank God that they won't give these things up. And, and all down through the box of years, they've tried to justify themselves and try to find this, a way to say that it's all right. God understands. But I'm telling you, look, God don't understand sin. Right. 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 
Amen. I'll tell you what, these, these people in over here in Europe and all the stuff that's going on. Some of the people watching them young men put their wives and their mothers and their children on them trains and trying to get them to safety. And they went back to the war. Yeah. Probably a lot of them never ever see their family yeah. again. See their wives. Amen. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I hope someday when you can bring me up here in front and you roll me down here in that old basket, I hope you'll have confidence that I fell on the right train yeah, and I was yeah. going the right direction. Yeah, yeah. Amen. I want, I want to make it, thank God. How many wants to make it? Yeah, yeah. I want to go all the way with the Lord. Yeah. Amen. We can't just hold on to part of it, children, and just have a guess whether we're going to make it. We, said, we need to know this sign. Yeah, that's right. Like Brother Cecil said, this is a no-so thing. Yeah. We need to know for ourselves. Amen. Let's stand tonight, children. Give us a song, please.